going pretty good, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? I mean, like any classic, sometimes they're temperamental, sometimes they're happy. Right, right. <laughs> Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage, the car featuring today 1970 71 Honda Z600 Coupe. These are great little cars, but the thing that really attracted me to this, I'm a sucker for father son projects. You know, my dad used to help me work on cars, or I helped him work on cars, whatever you want to call it. And we heard about these two. This, this is an original car, it hasn't been repainted or anything, it's just been maintained and restored, although it did sit for three years for a while until they found it. Let's bring in the Harrison and Buck Woodruff. Come on in, you guys. This is Harrison the son, Buck the dad. I love father and son projects. I don't know if people do that much anymore, but when I was a kid, everybody worked on, with their dad on a motorcycle or a snowmobile or something. So, And you guys have brought this thing back, not from the dead, but it was, it was on its way downhill, wasn't it? It was disheveled, to say the least. Disheveled? That, yes. That, that, that's what a salesman <laughs> would say. Needs recommissioning. A little bit. Now, Buck, you were the youngest Honda dealer in the state of Georgia, isn't that correct, when you were a young man? Yes, I was. 25 years old? Yes. Well, that's that's pretty good. How do, how do you cop that one? That's all right. Well, I, got, I was very lucky. Yeah. I was working with a gentleman that had another franchise in Honda, and I, I chose to stick with Honda, and I was awarded a franchise when they were looking for American dealers, young oh. and American. Well, you know, I love this era when Shishiro Honda, am I saying his name correctly? I believe so. The, the founder, because he was a real engineer and he loved engineering. Uh, later when he died, like any company, things kind of go by committee, but he had an iron fist about how things should be done. I remember, I guess it was it the CVCC engine, that was the big breakthrough, because I remember all the American auto manufacturers throwing money at watch. We can't meet these emissions, and it's impossible, and lobbyists, and, and Mr. Honda came in and said, what, what, what are you trying to get? What are the rules? Okay, went back to Japan, came back with that engine, and it was revolutionary. Got yes, that it, was, it, that it was power, half. it met emissions, and people went, whoa, how'd you do that? And, and, and this is a classic example of that. I, I just like it because it's so Japanese. You know, Hondas and, and Toyota, they're all world cars now. But this really reflects the Japanese sort of ethos of, of engineering and high revving. And uh, I've got a little 64 over there, my 600. And the red line is 9,500 RPM in 1964. I mean, it's, cra it's crazy. It's just screaming. And you think, I'm hurting it. But no, that's what it loves. And it's pretty much, is that the same engine as mine, basically? Uh, it's derived off the Honda motorcycle engines. Right. If that's the, uh, I believe it's a 598cc. Well, it's interesting. Now, you say, I used to hear it was derived from, and then when I spoke to Japanese people, they said, no, it was using the technology, mm -hmm. but it was built as a, it was never a motorcycle engine adapted to a car. Makes sense. It was just using the high revving, uh, you know, multi-valve, that type of thing, technology to achieve power instead of low-end torque like, like America. So it, this is what you sold new, pretty much, as a young man, correct? Uh, this came before me. Right, but I mean, not a much A couple before. of years, yes. But what do you? What, what would you give on a trade in these back in the 70s? Seventy-five dollars, a hundred dollars? No, a little bit more than that, but not much. <laughs> yeah. No, well, that's what I mean. They were just sort of almost disposable cars for people at the time, weren't they? Well, um, America didn't know right. what this product was, and this was the in between transition of motorcycles to a car, and then before CVCC, and then the bigger car, which is the Accord all followed this. And plus you had a lot of ill feeling because of the war. I mean, there was a lot of things going against it when it yes. came in. So they really had to earn the medal by engineering and technology. And it wasn't anything like an American car. No, who who in that. America would make a car with 13 inch wheels? I no. mean, yeah, <laughs> it just seemed almost funny. Especially down in Georgia, they see a guy, what, what kind of car <laughs> is that, boy, what do you got? I was thinking, remember the Dodge Sheriff? Do you remember that Sheriff in the sure. Dodge commercials? It was kind of racing engine in there, boy. I, 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 was this a tough sell? Was it tough to sell these in Georgia when you started? Yes, it was, because this, this was introduced in the middle of the uh, muscle car right. uh, era, uh, which is still going on. But um, Mr. Honda was very technical and very much a visionary in his time. 
the precision was the focus, right? And the efficiency was the focus, and uh, America caught on. And and uh, and this is what you grew up with, probably as a kid, correct? Not quite. <laughs> no, not quite. not quite. We were driving around in a little bit bigger vehicles with a lot less MPG, but right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what brought you around back to these again? So, kind of a a conversation he and I had a, a few years ago. It, it was he wanted to involve me in, in the dealerships and Honda and Acura and with him having you know s started selling these when he was 25 and I'm 23 now right have a year and a half left to school right he thought it would be a pretty cool lineage and heritage thing to go find the first thing that he sold us to if we need to completely redo it or find a, a living relic such as this right put it in the showroom and just have like a family lineage between us. And Honda where did and the you car. find it? Did you find this in Georgia? I found no. it in Pasadena. Oh, Pasadena, right yeah. here. On Why Facebook. didn't I? I didn't see it in Pasadena. I would have bought it from a, All right, that's okay. If you weren't looking on Facebook Marketplace, you might have missed I it. I guess that's true. <laughs> Let's open the hood and show them. Absolutely. Uh, show them what we got here. Other side. Oh, it's the other side? It is. Okay, you guys open it up. Well, it's right. This is originally a right hand drive car. That's correct. Converted to the American market. And there'll be a hook on the front One left. More. Right up here. I think there's a bird stuck under the hood. I know. It's talking. There it is. Mounted transverse. Mm-hmm. How many cylinder? Two? Two. Two. Oh, this is two. Okay. No, two. mine is four. Yeah, mine yes, is four. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it's six hundred cc's? Uh, just under. Just under. Like 598. Five yeah. Marketing reasons. Yeah, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> okay. So not the big block. No. Uh, the, well, the 800 coupe came later. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah. See, my, mine is a four-cylinder uh, roller bearing crank. Okay. It's pretty sophisticated. I yeah. mean, if it said Porsche on it, it'd be a half a million dollars. Absolutely. With, with the roller bearing crank and 9,500 RPM red line, okay. it was as sophisticated. Well, even the Porsche twin cams in the 50s went to maybe 7,300, 7,400. Mm. They didn't go to 9,400 no. like mine, so that's pretty interesting. I wonder why they went to two cylinder rather than four. I guess for space, and I guess a little more torque, more bottom end with the probably, okay. Well, with this car, it was the transition from motorcycle engine into a bigger car. Right. And two cylinders had the efficiency of four, Right. I presume. And what but did these the, get? The, Close to 45? Pretty good. Oh, oh they got 60 miles to 60 gallon. miles per yeah. gallon? Yeah. I mean, we can't, we can't <laughs> do that now. No. No, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's very nice. If I might add this, this is just how we bought it. It's not been changed or altered. Right, right. And that's very important. Uh, all the numbers match, all the everything's correct. Right, you got the original paint on it. it. Everything. You even have the original it, it, wiper bag. Oh, okay. It, it, that and holds and the, fluid. the vinyl is still soft. The original owner plates and everything. Right, the batteries once a changed. car salesman, always a car. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Leno's got the original wiper bag right here. You got this boy. But I'm getting fast talked into buying this thing right now. I it's not for sale. Oh, now it's not for sale. Now, see, you got to ask him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, very nice. I, I just like how comp it is so different than opening the hood of anything American, especially in 1970. I mean, Absolutely. it just it doesn't bear any relationship to it. Uh, and what was the red line on this? Ooh. Does, did it come with a tack in the coupe? It does. It does, okay. It's about 75, it's 75. 75 or 7200, something like yeah, that. Yeah, but it'll stay there all day, won't yeah, it? Yes. Yeah. Top speed was what, maybe 90 miles an hour, something like that? Took a long time to get there, but yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as long as you're going downhill, yeah. yeah. Clutch into. Very cool. Well, let's walk around. Let's see. When this, will this shut? Yeah, right here. Lift yeah. Oh, there we go. And, and you even got the original tool kit and, and we do. spare tire, huh? Absolutely. So let me just grab the keys. Hey, this. got more trunk room than my P1 McLaren. <laughs> oh, there's your spare tire. Oh, you got, is that the original tool kit? It is. And what did you get for tools? What did they give you? They gave you a really wacky looking. Oh, this is part of the jack. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I see. Hang on. Yeah. Multi tool. Oh, oh I see. It, yeah, it's a okay. So you got all every kind of. 
And what does this do? You can't find or buy anything oh, like that. Oh, I see. That holds, oh, that holds it together. Of course. There you go. Yep. There you go. You're not going to find this anywhere. No. no. Okay, there you go. Is that the original Atari that came with it? It is. Okay, that's funny. We haven't pulled it out to see if it's... Um, we haven't pulled it out to see if it's... <laughs> to see if it's dry rotted yet. We don't really want to know. No, you don't want to know. Well, right, you know, the in. funny thing about these things is you find them and you think they're going to need everything and you just drain the fluid and put fresh fluid and they're fine, you Absolutely. know. I found a bunch of 305 Hondas. Uh, I, I, I've got a 150 uh, Dream, you know, little, uh, it, it just sat outside. Mm -hmm. And you put you know, kick a ring, 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 and it runs, you know. It's, it's, it's yeah. really funny, yeah, yeah. Cool, well, that's very neat how they have the spare tire and everything hidden under there. Right. So you got leaf springs, and it's had drums all the way around, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, correct. Not many options. There's no air conditioning, certainly, back nope. in the day on these, no. Just a blower. And, and it's a four-speed, correct? It is. Yes. Okay, four -speed. Did they make an automatic? They didn't make it in the Z. In no. A, no, not okay. in the Z. Yeah. Okay, now I noticed the seats have some piping, but you added that, right? Yes, we, um, we redid the seats on it. it. I mean, we tried to find the original fabric. Right. We just couldn't find any. Yeah. And they were just, like I said earlier, disheveled. Yeah, yeah. But, but there are probably people now starting to, you know, all this stuff is becoming collectible again and absolutely. people coming up with the original fabrics. You know, for the longest time I couldn't find that correct German leather for my 6.3 Mercedes. So all modern leather is sealed. It's not really leather. Yeah. Right. It's something else, you know. You can't put hide food in it and make it smell and get that rich, <laughs> you know. But this guy had the leather, and then so you could, you could probably find that. Absolutely. Uh, certainly in Japan, because in Japan now these are... It's funny, when this car was built, there was no Japanese car heritage. Mm -hmm. Cars were really just 15 or 20 years old, the population. Now they have a rich heritage, mm -hmm. you know, the Z car certainly, and the early Honda convertible. Yeah, very nice. It's, it, you know, it looks so funny today. Even that the new smart car is bigger than this. Oh, absolutely. A Fiat's bigger than this. Right, I know, it's funny, it's funny. <laughs> but, but, it's, but it's to scale. It is to scale. If, you, if we stepped away, it would look somewhat normal. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what, what is the horsepower rating on this motor back then? You remember? I just know the CCs. Okay. But I'm not. 600 CCs. So mm -hmm. it's probably. I think it's 65 horsepower. It is 65, yeah. which is. Yeah, 60 something. I've got a 37 Fiat Topolino. That's a flathead. Okay. That's 600. That's 590 CCs. But it's only 13 and a half horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> and that extra half. Just kind of gets you over the hill, maybe yep. a little bit. Yep, that one bump. But still great fun to drive, aren't they? Oh, a blast. Yeah. It sounds good. It's fun to drive manual. Yeah, it's almost like a Japanese version of a Mini Cooper. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what's fun. When these cars came out, it wasn't necessarily an economy thing, although so it was for a lot of people. But for, like, rock stars, politicians, they just liked because it was like a Mini Cooper. It was a cool thing to have. Yes. I remember the Beatles had Mini Coopers and Twiggy and, you know, all, all those kind of people who could afford, obviously, a Rolls Royce or something. But there was a certain uh, cachet to driving these around. Did you have any problems? What, what was your biggest problem? Um, did, did it run fairly quickly? And it had been sitting, it had been sitting for three years, you said. Yeah. So the previous owner, it had been sitting for three years. And he went to the gentleman Mings in, in right. Pasadena, okay. and he went, you know, mechanically through it. Before that, it wasn't running at all. Yeah. For about 30 years, out in front of a, a small mechanic, ironically, at, in front of a mechanic yeah. shop. And they uh, got it running. Our biggest issue was just the idle rate. Um, and then yeah. sometimes the throttle would stick. Right. Recently, it's liked to stick a little bit, but, you know, nothing yeah. little WD 40 or. Well, fix. it's funny because, you know, we live in such a disposable society. You know, my mother's from Scotland, and we went back one time, and the local vicar came by to say hello to us, you know. And he was driving a, a 1962 Honda Bentley, one of those uh, motorcycles, you know. And I said, oh, did we store this? He went, no, I bought it new. Oh, he bought it new. He bought it new in 62, and he was still, still because they take care of stuff. Here, yeah. you know, we, we buy stuff like this. 
we beat it into the ground, we throw it away, and then we buy the next thing. Exactly And right. then you get to be 25 or 30, oh, I want to go back and get, and then you go back looking for your childhood, mm -hmm. you know. In, in Europe, cars and motorcycles are precious things. They don't have $50 cars in England, I don't think, like we have here, mm -hmm. you know. There were so many, when I was a kid, you could buy a car for almost nothing, find a car in a field, but that didn't exist back then. So I just thought that was funny. He'd been driving this motorcycle for 45, 50 years at the time, so. Well, can we take it for a ride? Absolutely, yeah, sure. Let's see what it does. Well, let's you'll need those. Why, thank you. Absolutely. The key is almost as big as the car. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we all going in, or are we playing rock, paper, scissors? Um, I think you deserve <laughs> the ride. Okay. All right, let's give it a shot. Once you're in, there's plenty of room. Just a little bit. Original muffler. Original muffler. <laughs> I mean, like any classic, sometimes they're temperamental, sometimes they're happy. Right, right. <laughs> like I have a, I have a 66, nothing special Mustang. Right. I found on the side of the road in Montana. Right. What do you Some, found on the, it was abandoned? Uh, it was oh, for sale. Oh, for sale, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, all original, paint interior, and on that, on that same wavelength, some days it will not make it from here to the red light. Right. Some days, you know, drive from here to Orange County. 289 or 6? Uh, 280. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, 289. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stick or automatic? Auto. Yeah. I want a manual. Well, you feel like you're driving, you know, you're involved. Yeah, you're having fun. Put a smile on your face. That's my only gripe about some of these modern cars is there's just so many nannies. Right, right. You know, you never, you're not, you're not part of it as much as you are with something like Does this. Does it have this in front or drum? Uh, it's drum. Yeah, four wheel drum, right? Yes. Yeah. For drum, it's not bad. <laughs> no, it's, it stops fine. Yeah. You know, I'm quite comfortable with this car. There's all kinds oh. of room. More room than in my Mira. <laughs> Itself, but the, the facility of your garage? Oh, I don't know. Well, I mean, I never, I wasn't trying to start a collection. I just never sold anything. Yeah. I just park stuff and buy something out. <laughs> the, first, the only car I've ever sold, or there's two. My F-150, that was my first car ever. Right. But, I mean, they made billions of those, so if I really want to go buy a gray F-150, I can. You'd like that new Lightning 150. That's, it, those it, are crazy it's, cool. It's excellent. Those it, are very cool. It's very cool, yeah. It's really good. One of my buddies up in Montana, they have one. Yeah. And uh, they drag raced one of my buddy, other friends' Performantes. Yeah. Whoops, the Performante. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was hysterical. You think you 
got 60 miles per gallon with this thing out. That's incredible. Like, makes me think we got a load of bad fuel, but I don't think yeah. so. Yeah. Like the throttle's not connected. Mm. See, like it it's loose? Like, feels like it's not getting fuel. Yeah. It's either fuel or ignition. Three things in an engine. Let's see what we get here. happy. Yeah. I think we got a fuel. Some gum, some a fuel. A little gummy thing. I'll tell you what you do. Yeah. I know what'll fix it. Pop that gas cap thing up. Okay. It's pressure. Yeah, yeah, I bet you're right. Your pinhole hole in your gas cap is blocked. I bet you're exactly and right. We filled the tank up. So hang on. That makes perfect sense. Ugh. I'll snag that key from you. There you go. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. I think I think we got a blocked uh, gas cap. I don't know. It didn't feel pressure. Gas cap off or on? Cap is off. Mm-hmm. <laughs>